Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's video, we will be going over the numerical expression section of the 2019 Star Math Test Prep Workbook for 7th graders. We will be reviewing rational numbers, probability, and predictions. This is part two. Part one, um, you can review or see part one. I'll have a box up above so that you can click on it and also look at that one. To follow along, you can purchase your Star Math Test Prep Workbook for seventh graders and the link will be in the description box. It's $15.99. Remember, seventh graders, if you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. Let's get started. Question four says, a number cube with faces labeled from one to six was rolled 20 times. Each time the number cube was rolled, the number showing on the top face was recorded. The table shows the results. Based on these results, what is the experimental probability that the next time the number cube is rolled, it will land with five or six showing on the top face? F, two out of five, G, three out of 20, H, one out of three, J, three out of five. Let's look at our table and look at the results. So numbers showing on top face, and also the frequency for one, it's zero. Two, the frequency is three. Three, the frequency is three. For the number four, the frequency is six. For the number five, the frequency is three. And for the number six, the frequency is five. That was most definitely a tongue twister, ladies and gentlemen. Our Critical question, what are we looking for? We are looking for the experimental probability that the next time the number cube is rolled, it will land with five or six showing on the top face. What information do we need to help find the answer? We need to know that the number cube was rolled 20 times, also that the number five was shown three times, and that the number six was shown five times. How do we solve the problem? Okay, so what we need to do is use our probability formula and we use that in question number three again on part one of the numerical expressions for seventh graders. Okay, so the probability formula is the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible items. So our number of possible outcomes, which is our denominator, the bottom number of our fraction, it's 20 times. How do we know that? Because in our question, it says a number cube with faces labeled from one to six was rolled 20 times. So that's the number of possible outcomes, okay? It's 20. Now to find out the number of favorable outcomes, we are looking for it to land on either five or six. So what we need to do is find out the and add the sum of the number of times five was rolled and the number of times that the number six was rolled. For the number five, it was rolled three times. For the number six, it was rolled five times. We add those together. Three times plus five times is equal to eight times. So now we can plug in our numbers or substitute in the values for the number of favorable outcomes. We know that's eight. And also the number of possible outcomes, we know that is 20. The first question we're gonna ask ourselves is, is that the final answer? No, it's not, because remember, anytime we are working with fractions, 
We always want to get our fraction to the simplest form. How do we do that? We find the greatest common factor in order to reduce our fraction. Now, because eight and 20 are both even numbers, we already know that a fact, a common factor of both of the numbers are two, I mean, is two. So even if you can't think of, okay, what number can go into both? eight and 20 evenly start with two because it's an e both of them are an even number so both of them ha can be divided by two okay but we know that our greatest common factor is four the highest or the greatest number that can go into both eight and 20 evenly is four so we have eight divided by four we know that's two and 20 divided by 4 is 5, okay? Now, looking at our answer choices and looking at our fraction or our ratio to the simplest form, what is our correct answer? If you said F, you are absolutely correct. Two-fifths. If you got this problem correct, high five. If not, no worries, keep working at it. One thing about math, and I know you probably don't wanna hear it is, the more you work at it, the better you become. Let's move to question number five. The 200 students in a school band will attend an awards dinner. A random survey of 25 of these students was conducted to determine how many of each meal should be prepared for the dinner. The results of the survey are shown. 12 students want a beef meal, eight students want a chicken meal, five students want a pasta meal. Based on the survey results, which of these is the best prediction of the meals wanted by the 12, I'm, I'm sorry, wanted by the 200 students? A, there are 16 students who want a beef meal. B, there are 52 students who want either a chicken meal or a pasta meal. C, there are 32 more students who want a beef meal than want a chicken meal. D, there are 24 more students who want a pasta meal than want a chicken meal. What question are we gonna ask first? You guessed it, what are we looking for? Very important question in helping us to solve this problem. We are looking for the answer choice that is the best prediction of the meals wanted by the 200 students. What information can help us find the answer? Okay, the information that can help us find the answer, number one, we know that there are a total of 200 students that are going to the dinner. We also know that there were 25 students surveyed, and of the 25 students surveyed, 12 students wanted a beef meal, eight students wanted a chicken meal, and five students wanted a pasta meal. This is the information we will use in order to solve our problem. How do we solve the problem? Great question. All right, I know this is a lot of information, but I wanted to break it down in detail so that you could fully understand. I don't want to shortchange you, okay? So it is a lot of information. We're going to go over all of it, but I would rather give you all of the information so that you can have all of the details to be able to understand how to solve this problem then just say oh the answer choice is fill in the blank i forgot what the answer choice is right now okay so in order for us to follow along with all of the students <coughs> excuse me i have a little cold we i highlighted so that we can kind of keep along with each number, okay? So we highlighted the, the students who wanted beef, the 12 students, we highlighted in yellow. The eight students who wanted a chicken meal, 
we highlighted in pink. The five students who wanted a pasta meal, we highlighted in blue. Okay, so let's drop all the way down at the bottom. Don't, let's not look at the answer choices yet. Let's drop all the way to the bottom. In order for us to solve this problem, what we had to do is set up our prediction formula to find out how many students out of the 200 would want, let's say for instance, a beef meal. Okay, in order for us to set up this problem, we have a ratio, right? So we have 12 students who wanted beef, you see beef in the parentheses on the far left side, over 25 students, and that's equal to N, because we don't know right now how many students out of the 200 that would want a beef meal. So we have N as our variable over 200 students. Now, what we need to do is cross multiply. We have 25N is equal to 12 times 200. Now, in order for us to find our, the value of N, we have to divide 25 on both sides to isolate our variable by itself. Okay, so 25 divided by um, 25n divided by 25, that's on the left-hand side. We get rid of that, or we're left with n. Do we stop there? Absolutely not, because what we do on one side of the equal sign, we have to what? Do to the other. If you hadn't heard that before, always remember, what you do to one side of the equal sign or one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. It's called balancing the equation, okay? So 2,500 divided by 25 is equal to 96. So the number of students out of 200 students that would want beef is 96, okay? Let's move to the uh, students that want chicken, highlighted in pink. We're gonna set up our uh, prediction formula again. We have eight students, eight chicken students, <laughs> over 25 students is equal to N, because remember, we don't know how many of uh, total students want chicken over 200. We do the same thing, we cross multiply, we have 25N is equal to eight times 200, okay? Eight times 200 is 1600. We know we wanna isolate our variable so we can find the value of it. So what are we gonna do? We are going to divide by 25 on each side. You're absolutely right. Once we divide by 25 on the left-hand side, we are just left with our variable, sorry about this, <coughs> N, okay? On the left-hand side, we have N, 1600 divided by five, 25 is equal to 64. So the total number of students out of the 200 that want a chicken, chicken meal is 64. Lastly, we have one more, guys, keep in there with me. We are looking for how many students out of our, excuse me, out of our um, sample group that want pasta. We know there are five students out of the 25 that were surveyed that want pasta. So again, we're gonna set up our prediction formula. We have five pasta students over 25 is equal to N over 200 students. We set up our we set up our equation. 25n is equal to 5 times 200 because we cross multiplied, okay? 5 times 200 is equal to 1000, so 25n is equal to 1000. Well, we know we need to get our variable on the side by itself, so we are going to divide 25 on one side. No, Miss Jackson, we are going to divide 25 on both sides. I'm glad to hear that. Once we do that, we are left with N is equal to 40. Okay? Now, whew, that was a lot, but we're not done yet. So let's look at our answer choices. Now that we have our information, we are going to 
put plug it into our answer choices so that we can find the correct answer okay so for a it said there are 16 students who want a beef meal hmm is that right no because when we set up our formula and we found the answer what we found is there are there are really 96 students who want a beef meal let's look at b there are 52 students who want either a chicken meal or a pasta meal so what we need to do in order to find out if this is correct we have to add our chicken which is 64 we know there's 64 students plus our pasta students that's 40 64 plus 40 is actually 104 so is that correct c there are 32 more students who want a beef meal than want a chicken meal well in order for us to find out um, if this is correct what we need to do is find the difference between our students who want a beef meal we know there are 96 students who want a beef meal and subtract it by the number of students who want a chicken meal 96 minus 64 is equal to 32 is that correct moving on d there are 24 more students who want a pasta meal than want a chicken meal so again let's look at it again there are 24 more students who want a pasta meal than want a chicken meal so there were only 40 that wanted a pasta meal did 24 more um is that were there 24 more students that wanted pasta than chicken? No, that's actually turned around. It's actually there were 24 more, more students who wanted a chicken meal than a pasta meal. So that answer is wrong as well. With all of the information that was given, and it was a lot, ladies and gentlemen, but you are keeping strong and I'm happy that you are what is our correct answer let's look at our answer choices one more time and our correct answer is if we could only do a drum roll it is C there are 32 more students who want a beef meal than want a chicken meal and that is it we are done with part two but wait do you live in the dfw metropolitan area if so we are having 2019 star math test prep boot camps for seventh graders on saturday february 2nd 1 to 4 30 p.m march 30th 1 30 to 4 30 p.m april 20th 1 30 to 4 30 p.m and sunday april 28th 1 30 to 4 30 p.m the link to sign up or register will be in the description box it will be at the conference suites in arlington 411 west road to six flag street just a friendly reminder the seventh graders will be taking their star test on monday may 13th and to purchase your workbook for $15.99, again, the link will be in the description box. This has been Shay Jackson with Hype Math. Talk to you soon.